I'm Cam Wyland. We talked last week about how to create awesome, larger-than-life good guys. Today I want to flip that on its head and talk about bad guys. In our quest to create realistic characters, we're going to want to give our bad guys just as many redeemable traits as we give our good guys flaws. Sometimes we're going to want to take that all the way to the hilt and actually redeem the bad guy in the end. One of my favorite examples of this is Harathan, a sort of warrior priest in Brandon Sanderson's Elantris. He's the primary antagonist throughout the book, a ruthless but honorable gent who, in the end, sees the light, switches sides, and is redeemed. But there is a pitfall to be aware of in all of this. If your antagonist is literally a bad guy, then you're going to want to give him the space to fulfill the, that role. That means not copying to making him too sympathetic or repentant. Um, you're going to want to give bad guys a few sympathetic traits by way of contrast. Great to give them pathetic backstories to help readers understand their motivations. Great, too, to give them a shot at redemption and to occasionally allow that redemption to come through. But don't be afraid to let your bad guys be bad. You want to create formidable opposition to your protagonists. You want bad guys who are evil, unrepentant, and scary as all get out. Too often someone will create a really good bad guy, someone who is so deliciously evil that you just can't wait for his demise, only to then start redeeming him. Unless this is done with the absolute finesse of beautiful character development, I'm more likely to be going, no, what have you done? And this character was so good at being bad. Don't ruin it by trying to make me like him. Now, of course, this is a broad generalization, but if you've got a bad guy who's just too good at being bad, then let him do what he's good at. Mm -hmm.